Hello, I'm Matt Roberts with Athletic Director U and D1 Ticker. I am excited today to be joined by Kevin White, the Athletic Director at Duke. And we've got a topic that Kevin knows a thing or two about, and that is mapping out career ambitions. So first off, Kevin, you have an unprecedented list um, and roster of administrators who are now athletic directors who have worked for you at one of your various stops. Do you keep like a, a tally mark, like a, a notch on your bed as a kid? That What is the number? Do you keep track? I, I really don't. There are people uh, at Duke that, that tend to, to tell me they're mapping it. I don't know how accurate any of it is, but uh, you know, Matt, it, it, it's really kind of a, a you know, a, a silly, so to speak, uh, I guess topic for me. Um, I, I've been the most fortunate guy in the world. Are you kidding me? I've been surrounded by some of the best, the brightest, the most talented, aspiring athletic administrators over my 37 years as an athletics director. Um, my career would have uh, ended long ago had I not been that fortunate, so fortunate to have some of the, again, the best and the brightest uh, on our team. But uh, I, again, when you look around and see some of the the young people that have emerged and we've got a whole bunch in the queue at this point that are in the process of fermenting and emerging. Uh, it's just so much fun. It's great, great fun. You, you use the term that are in the queue and I want to start there a little bit. And I'm, I'm curious if we take a step back and you think about the process of an administrator, a growing advancing administrator who comes to you and says, Kevin, I think I'm ready to be an AD. There's an opening at X school. Here's why I think I may fit, and I want to go after that opportunity. In the situation where maybe you aren't quite sure if that specific individual is ready to be an athletic director, how do you uh, broach that conversation uh, to advise them on, hey, I, I still think you may need some seasoning in a certain way, or here's maybe why you don't fit there. Have there been instances where you've had that conversation as opposed to immediately saying, yes, go get it. I'll of course help and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it's, um, I don't even know how to respond to this one other than to tell the truth. And I pride myself on being a truth teller. Um, I'm New York candid and I, I tend to offend people. I won't do it publicly, I'll do it privately. But I'll tell you, if you ask me my, my opinion, I'm going to render that opinion to you. And it's not going to be a negotiable opinion. And we're not going to modify it to make you feel better. And so I take great pride in that. So if somebody isn't quite ready, they're going to hear that from me, if, if that's my opinion. And if there are some things we can do to better prepare you, we will kind of put that curriculum together. And uh, we've adjusted positions to help people grow in, in areas where we thought they were a little, maybe uh, maybe not quite weak, but uh, you know underdeveloped. And, and so we, we've kind of done that in an overt way to get people ready. And we've done that for a long time and, and with, some, with some pretty good success in that regard. But the, the bottom line is, um, I, I think it's really important to be candid and be honest. And uh, you're fooling around with people's lives and careers and it's uh, you know you you get one opportunity to make a great decision in terms of pursuing a position and so you really you really need to put yourself in a position to win and and to be well prepared I mean generally speaking if you could tick off some tangible um, assets of an administrator that you see in individuals who are ready to become an athletic director and maybe intangible ones too of course that are important the, the softer skills that are needed yes. to uh, to excel in that role, just top of mind, what would be some of the things you would say are, are, are absolutes that you need to see in somebody first before you think they're ready? You know, Matt, there are, um, I, I, I te with Nina King, I co-teach uh, an MBA sport business class at, at Duke at, at Fuqua. And uh, we have so much fun with it. And basically what we do is introduce all the functions of business to athletic administration and or to sport. Um, so all of those functions, most of the business functions, can be delegated to some degree, in my opinion. Uh, you, can, you can get a really good CFO, you can get a really good compliance person, you can get a really good development team. You can, you can do all of that and uh, facilities, operations, and the rest of it. But what you can't delegate, you need to be the leader. So leadership is, it can't be delegated. 
and you really need to have a pretty high political IQ. So leadership and politics, they're at your desk, and, and they really can't be farmed out and or delegated. Uh, and it's not to, not to suggest that you're not involved as the leader in a lot of the other functions of the operations of, of, the, of say, an athletics department, because you are to some degree, but you flash in and out of those, in my opinion. But you are honed in on being the leader, and, and managing the, all the political forces. And lots of times those political forces are competitive and, uh, and, and managing them is, it can be all consuming, but nobody else can do that but the leader. I actually call that kind of the peanut butter and jelly of athletic directorship. Before, yeah. and it's, it's leadership and, and politics. And if you're, uh, if, if you're unprepared in either of those two areas, you know, I tell people that take my class, you know, uh, don't buy a home, rent, because you're not going to be there long. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's typically a ticket to a short tenure if you don't have both of those two. I'm the Associate AD for Academics at Tulane or Arizona State. Sure. How do I display political acumen in that role in a way that's building a greater context of how you need the jelly to the leadership piece right. when you... I, I think some people think internally, I'm not out, I'm not creating relationships with donors, I'm not understanding the political dynamics of who helps support our program in, in really major ways, but there's still a, a piece of understanding the political environment in your area first, right? Yes. You know, Matt, that's uh, maybe a, a real long digression and I'll, I'll, I'll try to shorten it up. I, I think we've made a, a real um, definitive decision many years ago to when we have people join our team, our administrative team, to uh, to think about uh, career development and, and and you know so how does that how does that play out within an athletics department? Uh, and, and I think what we've tried to do is uh, I use an expression called wallpaper. And when I say wallpaper, everybody on our administrative team knows what that means. Uh, it's cross pollinization. It's, it's so everybody knows what everybody else is doing all the time. So you may be responsible for uh, oversight of the business operation, but you really have a pretty good sense of development, you'll have a pretty good sense of facilities, you'll have a really strong sense of compliance. And, and so cross-pollinating that, that executive staff team or the senior staff team, whatever syntax you use, uh, is really, I, I think, vital for growth and getting people prepared to take the, you know, the ultimate step to become the leader of a department. Um, and so with that comes all those political forces that need to be managed in each of those disciplines. And so we really work hard at creating kind of a, you know, a growth curriculum and, and if you will, and our people really do have a pretty good sense as to what's going on all around the department. And um, there are no deals with me and this person or that person, you know, and sidebar conversations. I mean, if it, if it needs to be on the table, it's coming on the table and everybody's going to feast on it and everybody will draw, enjoy a growth opportunity. And we take that really pretty seriously. It, to, to go a little, uh, just a step further, I actually talk about this when when we recruit somebody or somebody's growing up through our system and we love to build the bench and we love internal upward mobility from inside the organization we absolutely love that and, and nine times out of ten we're able to manage that way uh, you know the the, the organization at a, as it continues to grow and develop but I talk a lot about um, direct and indirect compensation and direct compensation is what we can pay you the end of the month what we can pay you financially uh politically uh you know practically indirect is what we can do for your career so you can jump in with us and we're going to enjoy an opportunity you'll enjoy an opportunity to grow and we're going to be earnest in our pursuit of your career growth because that's what we're going to promise you on the way in it's like recruiting a player and so the oper the idea here is not just to deliver it's to over deliver Liver. And so cross-pollinating, wallpapering, building the bench is all part of that. When are you going to write the book? When you <laughs> there, there is no book. <laughs> um, so I just finished Michael Lombardi's Gridiron Genius yes. um, on some flights in the last month. One of his thesis points is there are times in the NFL where ownership over-index on what's hot, right? So right now, Sean McVay with the Rams and that sort of profile. We saw with Cliff Kingsbury and that sort of thing. 
And he says the overcompensation doesn't sometimes account for the the, the skills needed to be a head coach and the leadership. And yes. again, that's a, that's one of your key points as well. But right now in college athletics, and maybe over the last decade, maybe we haven't over-indexed on those who raise money, automatically showing that they can be a leader as well. But but have we over-indexed on that skill set? I, I would think we have. Okay. You know, it's interesting over the years, and and I'd say more in the last 20. I mean, it's hard to believe I'm um, this old and I've been around this long, but I'll have an occasional president call and say, hey, I'm looking for an athletics director who, give me a short list, who might I be thinking about? And the executive search guys, as of late, call quite frequently to a number of, of ADs and ask the same questions. And almost, you know, you'll almost anticipate, I'm really looking for a resource acquisition person. I'm looking for a development person. And of course, my, you know, my, re my response to that is you need much more than that. And you can create a really strong development team within your athletic administrative unit, but you really need to have a, as I've already said before, a leader and somebody that can manage all the political forces. And, um, and you just can't have just somebody that can raise resources because typically that that's that that doesn't end well mm -hmm. and you can kind there's a lot of history and you can take a look at backgrounds and and preparation and wherein success uh, presented itself and unfortunately where where people were unsuccessful the kinds of backgrounds that they had so I'm pretty critical of of that one dimension that uh, you know that more resources will solve all problems because that's not the case these these uh, athletics departments uh, particularly in at places that are really aspirational. Um, they remind me, I was thinking about it this morning, they, they remind me of the lyrics from All Along the Watchtower. Uh, Uncle Bob Dylan would be my preference, not Jimi Hendrix. But, uh, you know, there's got to be some kind of way out of here, said the joker to the thief. There's too much confusion. I can't get no relief. That's an athletics department in 2019. And so a president needs to understand, or an executive uh, search firm, and these guys are pretty savvy, they do understand. Uh, I think today and, and or a search committee or whatever the process might be they need to understand it's much more than just raising money let's go back to your your point about um, being invested in somebody's path internally and you talk about we're gonna build you and, and and give you more responsibility as as you want to develop yourself and as you show you're capable of doing is that a collective process with, and I don't know if it's your executive staff or your senior staff, and you have an assistant AD for fill in the blank who is really promising, and you all identify he or she needs to be given more responsibility. How do you determine where that comes from, whose plate that comes off of? Is that a voluntary opportunity, or is that a voluntary um, admission for some of your team members to say, we do need to give this individual more responsibility, and I have Maybe it's a sport over a sport oversight role. Maybe it's um, a separate unit. Whatever it may be. How do those conversations play out? You, you know they um, they play out, Matt, and I think this way. What we're trying to do is what's best for the the organization, the enterprise, um, and and of course, if we're doing that, we're being true to that. We're going to do what's best for the student athlete, and that's not to be Pollyanna. Sure. That's that's where this whole thing starts and stops for for me and for many of us that do this. Um, but to, to do what's best and to do what's right, and then on top of that. As I've already said, be candid and, and have really good conversations um, and group conversations and let everybody know what the words to the song are. And, and this is why and this is this is our timing. And and you may not feel great about this at, at, in this particular moment, but you're going to have an opportunity as well. And and it, that's I, I really work really hard at and I've used the expression already being a truth teller. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the great things about being an old guy. I, I can be a truth teller. Uh, and uh, that's that's probably the best thing about, you know, my fourth decade in this uh, athletic administration world is that I've arrived at a place where uh, no holds barred. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I think, whether whether you like it or not, and if I offend you, I'll apologize profusively, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Sure. You, you just called yourself an old guy. Your term, not mine. Oh, yeah. I'm an old guy. There's no question about that. Laura. Just ask my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tomorrow. <laughs> Laura, Maine, Tulane, Arizona State, Notre Dame, Duke. Maybe you have another uh, trick up your sleeve. Who knows? But... 
I want to ask you as we close here to be reflective a little bit and consider inflection points on your own career path and if there's any that you would point to and say man if I wouldn't have made this move who knows where I would have ended up are there some that come immediately to mind for you there are um, you, you know the, the first one is moving from coaching to athletic administration 1982 oh my god that was a tough decision uh, I was a, a very happily employed uh, track and field coach and very proud and had had great kids and uh, and uh, you know assistant coaches and, and and the like and and was loving that world and uh, I was completing a terminal degree and all of a sudden I started getting invitations to look at, at small college AD jobs and I, the, the one I actually was very fortunate to, to secure was at Lawrence College in Dubuque, Iowa, which was a fantastic place to start. You know, it's a different time, a different era where you could kind of go from smaller to larger, and, and that made sense. You couldn't probably do that today with the cultural and, and financial and political differences that exist in these places. But in any event, I, I actually turned that job down a couple of times, and then they came back to me like maybe a third time. And in a weak moment, I took it. But boy, did I have buyer's remorse. Uh, for two years, every time a track job opened, a high-profile track job opened, I'd get a phone call because I was that kid at one point and, uh, and, and really kind of had that career going a little bit. And uh, gosh, I almost stepped back a couple times. And I don't, I don't know what would have happened had I, had I not stayed in athletic administration. Might have been better. Might have been a lot better, by the way. But it could have affected a lot more lives and, and had a lot more fun. But um, and, and then over the years, Matt, there's been you know a couple of really good AD jobs have presented themselves, and I just didn't feel good about it. It wasn't the timing, yeah, and, 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 and our kids, and you know, and and we maybe have raised a whole bunch of resource at the school I was currently serving, and so it wasn't the time to make a move. And oftentimes I find myself laying in bed late at night and I say, I wonder if I did go there. But so, but you know what? This profession has been so good to me. I mean, it's like I held up a Brinks truck. You gotta be kidding me. This has been fantastic. What a run we've had with so many great people. Most, most importantly, a phenomenal group of student athletes across those institutions. Great coaches, many of which I'm very close to even all these years later. And, uh, and an administrative team that I'd kill for and, and most of them had killed for me. They were terrific. Are you a pro-con list guy? Are you a scoring matrix guy? Are you a let me just look at it all and hear it all and make a gut decision on some of those that were great opportunities that you didn't take? I mean, what, what's, what's the tangible process of that? You know, I, I, I think um, the uh, it's more of an informal process. It's probably around red red juice and uh, and reflections late at night, listening to Irish traditional music, and and I let my mind wander. But no, I I I'm not as metric oriented, and I don't think many people in my generation are. And I think those that that say they are, are you know, they got you know they they got a little Pinocchio going. I don't think I don't think they really are. They need more red shoes, not less. But anyway. I do have reflective moments, but you know, I I have to tell you as I sit here with you again, I've professed how I'm a truth teller. I feel like I've 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 had uh, you know a, an unbelievable uh, set of opportunities in which um, I'm very grateful and appreciative. Great institutions, wonderful student athletes, amazing coaches, and administrative team to die for. Well, I'm appreciative of you joining us today. I know I've been after you a couple of times, so thank you for making the time. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, Max. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.